man, I'm just tired of seeing slave movies. Mm-hmm. I feel like now I'm gonna start producing and developing projects where it's like let's talk, like let's talk about African kings and queens and I mean, presidents. That's what, like, yeah, owners of networks. Well, that's what I said. Is like they want to keep reminding us. It's like, oh yeah, we know about Obama, but don't forget about Toby. Absolutely, you know what oh, I mean. Man. It's like it's one of those things mm-hmm. where okay, we've seen enough slave movies. We get it, and I'm pretty sure the movies are great. They're probably well made. The acting is phenomenal, but. I just I, I don't need to see two slave movies every year and then everybody act like yo this is the greatest film right. ever. It's like yo we can do other things than play mm-hmm. you know slaves and butlers and I feel uh, the same you know exactly. what I mean like so like, like what's the point? It's like okay we knew we're mm-hmm. slaves. Yeah, and it was what's there the were point great of great films like you know and not even to say because I know it's American history I get it mm-hmm. and you know we, it needs to be told. I'd rather hear it from my family or history books. I don't need to have Hollywood tell me about it. But if you want to tell like even going back to when they did Cleopatra in Elizabeth Taylor starred in it. Let's that was a phenomenal movie. Right. Let's do that again. Let Halle Berry be Cleopatra. Right. Let mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like there's African warriors and things that we could be making these great epic movies. And you know, Hollywood ain't caught on to that trend yet. We in the slave well, trend. You- oh, I got over. Hello, my name is Matthew Carlton and I'm going to take you on a journey. I'm going to present to you the African American timeline of history. It all began in Africa in the 1600s. Africa is a country that had kings and queens. It has many riches like diamonds and gold. And did you know rice originally came from Africa? A lot of people think rice came from China. In 1619, people from Africa were kidnapped by the Europeans, or the whites, and forced into slavery. They were chained and crammed into ships and brought to America and sold into slavery. Slavery lasted for about 300 years. While on the ships, some African Americans jumped overboard knowing they would drown. Slaves were treated badly. They were beaten with whips, chains, and shackled. Slaves were sold and often separated from their family. They worked hard building this country, the United States of America. In 1765, Eli Whitney was born. He died in 1825. He was an inventor that invented the cotton gin. This is a machine used to harvest cotton. In 1773, a little girl named Phyllis Wheatley was kidnapped so she could be made a slave. Phyllis Wheatley was very smart and was the first African American to have a book published. In 1800, Nat Turner was born. He died in 1831. Nat Turner was a natural preacher. He had a strong influence on the local slaves. He got a group of slaves together and led a rebellion against the slave owners. In 1849, Harriet Tubman led over 1,000 slaves to freedom through the Underground Railroad. In 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. This allowed the 16th President, Abraham Lincoln, to say, all of the people held as slaves in the United States are free. He also fought for social justice. In 1867, Howard University became the country's first black school. Blacks graduated from there, became dentists and doctors and other professionals.
Harlem Renaissance, the happening place to be was the Cotton Club, right in the heart of Harlem. It was originally opened as the Club Deluxe by heavyweight boxing champion Jack Johnson at 142nd Street and Lenox Avenue in 1920. Owen Madden, a prominent bootlegger and gangster, took over the club in 1923 while in prison in Sing Sing and changed its name to the Cotton Club. While the club was closed briefly in 1925 for selling liquor, the owner's political connections allowed them to reopen without trouble from police. Madden used the Cotton Club as an outlet to sell his number one brand of beer to the Prohibition crowd. While the club featured many of the greatest African-American entertainers of the era, such as Duke Ellington, Joe Smith, Fats Waller, Dizzy Gillespie, Nat King Cole, Billie Holiday, and Ethel Waters, it generally denied admission to blacks. During its heyday, it sh served as a chic meeting spot in the heart of Harlem, featuring regular celebrity nights on Sundays, at which celebrities such as Jimmy Durant, George Gershwin, Mae West, Irving Berlin, Eddie Cantor, then New York Mayor Jimmy Walker, and other luminaries would appear. The club was decorated with the idea of creating a stylish plantation environment for its entirely white clientele. As with many New York City clubs at the time period, that meant the upper class of the city. The Cotton Club at first excluded all but white patrons, although the entertainers and most of the staff were African American. Exceptions to this restriction were made in the case of prominent white entertainment guest stars who wished to bring African Americans with them, and the dancers themselves. Dancers at the Cotton Club were held to very strict standards. They had to be at least five and a half foot tall, light skinned but only a slight tan, and under 21 years of age. And Duke Ellington himself was expected to write jungle music for this audience of whites. The oppressive segregation of the Cotton Club was reinforced by its depiction of the African American employees as exotic savages or as plantation residents. The music was often orchestrated to bring to mind a jungle atmosphere. By transforming the club into this plantation atmosphere and bringing in celebrities, Owen Madden created a demand for the Cotton Club and its exclusionary policies, and he also helped perpetuate widely held stereotypes about African Americans. Nonetheless, the club also helped launch the career of Duke Ellington, whose orchestra was the house band there from 1927 to 1931. A man of literary genius, social awareness, black pride, and an undeniable intelligence. Langston Hughes was one of America's leading poets of the black literary world and was one of the earliest innovators of the new literary art form called jazz poetry. He is respected as a powerful luminary force during the period of artistic achievement known as the Harlem Renaissance. Born in Joplin, Missouri in 1902, Langston Hughes was only 19 when a poem he wrote called The Crisis was published in a major magazine after moving to New York in 1921. 1952. Malcolm X was a minister for the Nation of Islam. He became one of the most powerful members of the black Muslims. He, like Martin Luther King Jr., also fought against the unequal and bad treatment of blacks. He was murdered in 1965. In 1955, December 1st, Rosa Parks sat on the front of the bus after a hard day's work. This was not allowed because blacks can only sit in the black section, which was the back of the bus. She refused to get up and give her seat to a white man. Rosa Parks' arrest led to the Montgomery bus boycott by blacks. Martin Luther King organized this boycott. No blacks rode the bus for 13 months. The result of the boycott led to the U.S. Supreme Court ruling that segregation on public buses was unconstitutional. In 1963, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. went to jail because he stood up to whites. He organized blacks and had peaceful marches to protest against the unequal and abusive treatment of blacks. He gave a very memorable speech about it called, I Have a Dream. In 1964, he received the Nobel Peace Prize. In 1968, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was shot and killed by James Earl Ray. This happened in Memphis, Tennessee on April 4th. Barack Obama. Barack Obama is an African American who was born in the state of Hawaii. He is a Christian. Barack Obama won the Nobel Peace Prize. In 2008, Barack Obama was elected the first African American to be President of the United States of America. He led the military to find and kill the most wanted terrorists in the world, Osama bin Laden.
Osama bin Laden organized the bombing and total destruction of the World Trade Center in New York City. In 2012, Barack Obama was re-elected to again be the President of the United States. Today, African Americans can be whatever they want to be if they just believe. Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, distinguished guests, comrades and friends, today all us do by our presence here and by our celebrations in other parts of our country and the world confer glory and hope to newborn liberty. Nelson Mandela was born July 18, 1918 in Transkei, South Africa, and he became the first member of his family to attend a school. Mandela began to study for a Bachelor of Arts at Fort Hare University, and that's where he met his friend Oliver Tambo, who became a lifelong colleague. Then after Mandela's 27 year imprisonment, he became president of South Africa. For most of Mandela's life, South Africa was under apartheid, which was the legal segregation that limited the rights of the non-white people of South Africa, while raising the status of the white people. This was enforced by the National Party government of South Africa between 1948 and 1994. People who were white during this time were guaranteed protection from the government and lived prosperous lives. As for the South Africans, it meant a great deal of suffering. Many people were forcibly removed from their homes to ensure that there were no interracial communities. Nelson Mandela wanted to remove apartheid because it was cruel and inhumane. His plan was not to gain power over the whites, but simply to create equality between different races. Nelson Mandela was imprisoned because he established a military wing in the African National Congress. Members! of the International Reception Committee. Dear friends here and elsewhere in the world. Our first symbol and habitus is to say, thank you. Thank you very much to you all. Thank you that you chose to care. When by ending the system of white minority domination, humanity will have ensured that never again shall the scared of racial...